order. I I was sitting here earlier and I said, there's no there's no there's no clock in this room. Where's the clock in this room? Well, it's there. And it's digital, and that threw me way off. That tells you my age. The good old watch. I'm not used to looking at things like that. So, welcome tonight. This is a uh, public hearing. We're here to hear. We are here to listen to you and your concerns about the library, and also we want you to tell us. Um, your creative ideas that you have for the, for the library because we're beginning our strategic plan. We started this um, just before the first year and we go clear through August, so we've got a long way to go through the strategic plan, but um, these meetings are just some of them and we're going to have a lot more, so we're looking for input and ideas from you. So I'm going to turn this meeting over to Gretchen and she's going to run the public comment part. Thank you, Diane. Um, as Diane pointed out, this is um, we, we've had three public meetings at this time, and, and this is um, the fourth one that we've, we've tried to have um, one in each location. Um, at each meeting, what we've asked is that you come up um, to the podium to speak, state your name, and what township you're from. <coughs> it would be concise, um, but we appreciate we want all comments. Um, you know, be aware that other people may want to speak as well. Um, we're here to, like Diane said, we're here to listen. So there's no, we're not going to go into solution space here. It's just, we're, and we're just an open forum for you to um, be able to speak your mind. So, uh, and it is being recorded and will be put on to the website um, within the couple days tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's within a couple days, <laughs> but it's faster. <laughs> so, who do we have that wants to um, speak first? And we have candy. We have incentives <laughs> too. So. <laughs> Did somebody push you? No. Richard did. My name is Sylvia Thomas. I'm a former librarian, retired librarian. Um, and I, I work part-time at Vincent University, and I work one night a week at the Franklin Library and another night at the Trafalgar Library helping their online students who live in Johnson County. So I'm pretty familiar with the library system. Um, so I'll, I'll just state what my visions are for each one of the branches since I'm kind of familiar with each one of them. Okay. Uh, for this building, the Clark Pleasant branch, I would love to see it doubled in size. I know there's space back there. Um, and when I browse the shelves, I see how crowded everything is. And, and I think their usage numbers are going up and I would like to see um, more space available for the people who live in this community. Um, oh, I, I live in Pleasant Township, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Uh, for the White River Library, I don't freak with that library as much as I used to, um, but I know there's a, a lot of growth in that area, and I would also like to see more space at the White River Library to uh, provide programs for the community and, and to continue to bring people in and continue to the good job that they've been doing. Um, the Trafalgar Library, I think, is wonderful. And I have to tell you, when my Vincennes students come into the Trafalgar Library for the first time, they are wild. They love it there. And I see a huge, huge difference in the reaction of my students when they come into the Trafalgar Library compared to when they come into the Franklin Library. They're not wild at the Franklin mm -hmm. Library, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't have any suggestions for the Trafalgar Library. I think it's wonderful. Uh, but for the Franklin Library, I would love to see some renovations made and some expansions. I'm not sure how we would do that without a refer another referendum, but do as much as you can. Um, updating the furniture. The furniture is old and the chairs really are uncomfortable. Um, the carpeting needs to be replaced. Much of the shelving um, is showing its age and looking pretty bad. Um, it, it just needs to be a more welcoming and, and comfortable environment for people to walk into. And it needs that wow factor that uh, Trafalgar has to continue drawing people in there. Um, and I think it was last week in the paper it mentioned 
the percentage of children who are not prepared for kindergarten. And I know that the children's librarians do a wonderful job at Franklin, and I know their space is very limited. So maybe if they could expand one direction or the other, um, add on to the children's area and increase the adult area as well so you have more space for the computer users and have more study rooms. Um, I've had a, some problems getting a space when I need a space to meet with the <coughs> students because there's not enough study rooms. And uh, space is a real problem down there. So I think that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Franklin 
has over the years increased its capacity of, of items that you had. I've donated a few of those items. Uh, I'd like to see that continued. Um, I, you know, I have no, I, I, the personnel in the library is great. If you ever walk in the Franklin Library, there's always, there's always a fresh young face or an older face that you know, and they always get greeted. Everything's fine. Fowler Library is great. Don't know about here because I'm not here that much. Don't know about White River Township. Not there that much. Um, but I'd like to see that continue. And it can only continue if we get things, as our other people who I've ever talked, that want some things to have. But things cost money. And so you have to do things very cost effectively. And that's what I want to make sure we do is that when we have our wants and our desires and we want to have them filled, we also have to understand that tax rates are tax rates. And the library is only one input into that tax rate. There are other entities that are also putting things into the tax rate. So when somebody says, well, it's only one or two cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation, that's true. But there are many other people also putting those two, three, four, five cents in and eventually adds up to dollars. And if you look in downtown Franklin, I don't know what you've noticed lately, but there's not a lot of buildings that are doing real well in downtown Franklin. I know there's a rebuilding thing. I've seen rebuilding things done in Franklin 150 times. Not seen one ever carried out to its fruition. Not once. And I suspect this one will not be totally carried out either. It's partially going to be carried out because some of it's already been done. But take a look at downtown Franklin and see how many buildings you've got that are either owned by the county, by the city, or by the library board. Quite a few. Those are all off tax rates. The tax base has been reduced by that. We don't create any more of the tax base. So the tax base just keeps diminishing. So we got to keep that in mind when we want things and we want to pay and then we have to pay for them. That's really all I have to say. Dan forgot to mention his wife's a longtime teacher at Franklin Schools, too. Mm -hmm. I don't want to brag, Ray. Right? He's going to text her right now. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay, thank you. I can also PDF him. <coughs> That's easier for you. Okay. We'll send you one more. Okay. Sure. Be great. Good evening, everyone. My name is John Wales. Uh, from Franklin, a uh, recently retired Franklin school board member, so. Uh, I put together a little present, or a little package for just the uh, board member's pleasure. Uh, if, if it would please you, I'd like to read the first page. I'm not going to read the rest of them, just kind of go over some highlights. First of all, I want to say thank you to the library board, administration, and staff for seeking input of the Johnson County community. Together, we can build the best programs and services for our citizens at a tax rate that's acceptable. I kind of feel like I'm a, a, a good uh, person to come up to the last few that talked because all of those people had quite a bit of experience in the library. And I can tell you my experience is the exact opposite. I have spent very little time in the libraries. In fact, today was the very first day that I've ever gone out and I've actually visited all the libraries today. <laughs> it's the first time I've done that. So the only one I've been in up to this point was Franklin. As a former school board member, I understand the desire for public input, and I also understand the frustration of receiving very little. My library story is not very broadening, but I believe it might be typical of many in the community. I spent very little of my time in my life in our libraries. Growing up in Burgersville in the 70s through the 80s, the library seemed too far away for us. In my adult life, I have frequented bookstores such as Borders and Barnes and & Noble, as I love to read, but never made my way to the public library and have never had a library card in my life. Due to my admitted inexperience in the library, I am sharing ideas that may well be in effect already, and if so, my apologies for not being or for being less prepared. I am also thinking about how we can provide not only adequate but excellent library services in an economic climate that will not allow for additional spending. 
In other words, how can we provide enhanced services lower or equal, at lower or equal cost by changing the face of library operations? One area that would be helpful moving forward is to have an easy-to-view critical uh, data on the library's website, such as the annual budget. This would be helpful if it were easily accessible. And with this in mind, the ideas listed below or listed in your package here, uh, keep in mind they're not fully developed in any cost analysis perspective, so some might not be as feasible as others. I do believe that most are cost effective, and I've, in, I've also included potential revenue streams to help minimize costs to taxpayers and patrons alike. On the bottom, you might recognize that statement, the library's mission. I put that on there because when I was looking at the ideas that, I had, that I'm proposing, I wanted to make sure that they fit into the library's mission, and I believe that they all do. The first one I want to mention is partnerships. Uh, coming from the school board, we have talked about this before, certainly need to develop these partnerships in, in greater detail than we have in the past. Partnering with all the schools, uh, in, especially in Franklin, where since uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're still limited in space at the library, one of the things I noticed when I was on my tour today is Franklin was by far the busiest at 9.30 this morning. <laughs> Uh, when I was going around, they were, they were packed in there. And almost every computer terminal was taken. What I was proposing as a school board member, and what I still propose today, is that we look into partnering with the schools to open up the middle school library and the high school library in the evening times, uh, possibly manned by someone from the library department, who could go in there and allow citizens to have access to computer terminals and that type of thing. Furthering that, I think you could take that even farther, and you can try to partner with the Parks Department, with the museum. This is all public money. This is all public places, and we're not using those to their fullest you know, capacities. At nighttime, they sit dormant. Why? We can use that space. It's the people's space. Let's use it. Other areas that we could think about is possibly partnering with local restaurants, uh, fast food restaurants, coffee houses, things of that, that nature, and putting in what I would call a library kiosk, which is basically a walk-up, lock-secure type of um, computer terminal where someone could access the library information. You can have a, you know, you could go to the website for the library or it could go to a special library kiosk screen, whatever, so they can access what books are where, they can check out ebooks, they can even check their email if they want, if they have a library card number that they can type in there, just like they do at the uh, branches now. That could easily be paid for, I think, by some of these companies that may want that in their building. You know, uh, um, Benjamin's Coffee House or Starbucks, they might really enjoy having a kiosk in there where people can come in there and that might be a, an excuse for someone to go in there and grab an extra cup of coffee because they're simply going in there to check their email and they know they have that access through the library. The library doesn't have to be just in the, in the bricks and mortar that we have now. We can expand it so much. A second idea, which I know you've probably thought of and, and tried, and I know other places have tried and with uh, mixed success, is possibly having uh, coffee stands within some of the districts that might be able to house those. Uh, certainly, when I went around today, I, I don't think that this branch would have the space for it, but um, Trafalgar very well might, uh, uh, Greenwood very well might, uh, White River Township very well might. And that could be done by just simply getting a contract out with, the, uh, with local coffee houses, actually having them pay us to come in and set up space. They can go in there, they can do studies to find out when or what hours would be more acceptable for them. That could be a revenue stream that comes into the library, plus also an, an another advantage to the patrons who come in who might enjoy sitting there uh, with a cup of coffee. I know I mentioned that I like going to bookstores, and if you go into Barnes & Noble, if you went into Borders before that, before it closed, you always saw the little cafe they had, and it was always packed. It was always, there was always people sitting there reading books and, and drinking coffee and just uh, socializing there. So I think that's an idea. And please let me know if I'm going too long and I can shut up. Uh, the third idea is library labs. I, I liked hearing about how we have different um, themes at some of the libraries, and this can go along with that well. Looking at putting in a specialized lab in each of the, dis in each of the branches, and the purpose for doing one in each one that would be different is to encourage people to want to go to different areas. 
Uh, when I think of this, the first one I thought of was a science lab, putting together an actual laboratory in, in a room where you have microscopes and different types of lab equipment where safe um, lab experiments could be done. When I thought about that, I love public education, and to be honest, I, I, I'm not a big fan of homeschool, but I know that there are many people who homeschool for various reasons. And those children that are homeschooled often get you know, the social interactions from church groups and from local sporting groups and things of that nature. But what I think an area where they really lack is the, the capabilities to do scientific experiments and lab work. You know, and in fact, I've heard that time and time again from homeschool parents who homeschool all the way up to high school and then send their kids to, high, to our high schools because they want that lab experience. So if we can provide a lab experience for them at an early age, it might open up a whole new world to them of opportunity that they had not seen before. So I think a science lab could be with, uh, a good choice. How do you fund that? The equipment that would take to do that? Well, I think that you would look at partnerships with, with companies such as Eli Lilly, Andrus Hauser, companies like that who might very well benefit from seeing a science lab and seeing children exposed to science early on, where they could grow up with that passion for science and maybe go into a career with that company. So maybe they could sponsor it. Maybe they could buy some equipment and they could be the, it could be the Eli Lilly Science Lab or something like that. That's an idea. Other ideas, yeah, and these, some of these might, you might think are getting out there a little bit far, but the next one I thought of is a recording lab. Think about teenagers today. Teenagers have really found, just like we did when we were teenagers, found an outlet with music. Uh, I see so many kids, and I, in my experience in the school board, who really see this as a way to express themselves. And I've seen kid after kid after kid put together songs. We had a, a great one just uh, last year in Franklin where they created a, a theme song for Franklin Athletics that was great. And this is just an outlet that we can provide at Franklin Schools, but not all kids get, get to see that. So why not put together a little lab in one of the rooms? These take very little space. I mean, these could be put in the space of a closet, literally. They're not big at all. They just have to be soundproof, and they have to be able to <coughs> sing or do what they need to do, and then go to a mixing station and actually do that. The equipment is not very expensive. Many kids actually have um, cheaper versions of that stuff at home. Software is readily available. That could be something that's, that's very cheaply done. Could be sponsored by somebody like maybe Corn Country Radio, who's right here in our community, who might see an interest in, in that as well. Uh, along those same lines, a video production lab might be something that would be a, a good thing to offer to patrons. You know, when you think about the history of libraries, it was to expose individuals who didn't have the means to this type of stuff, to books back in the old days, to a new world. Well, books are readily available to all of us now, and we shouldn't get rid of that, but so is all this other stuff. And so video production, I think, is a good one, because everyone wants to preserve their old home videos, or create music videos, or commercials, or, or, or documentaries, or whatever they want to do. But if we have a lab to do that, and again, that's not very expensive. Most people are buying these cameras now that are have high definition cameras that you can buy that fit in the palm of your hand for 200 bucks. So. Those things to be done, I'm not saying buy the cameras, I'm saying let them film it, they come in and they actually can use video, video editing software that we provide for them. Uh, and again, looking for sponsorship on something like that, you can look at local TV stations, um, you know, Comcast, Metronet, somebody who might have an interest in that. How about a self-publishing book lab? You know, a lot of people like to think they uh, want to unleash their inner writer but never had the ability to do so. Now you can. Anybody in here can write a book and pay a couple dollars to have it published. It doesn't cost that much anymore. We can provide those tools for people at a very effective cost. And again, the sponsorship opportunities might be the Daily Journal or something like that. And then one that uh, I, I've waffled on back and forth is a blogging lab. You know, blogs are, are a new news medium. Uh, and I say news lightly because sometimes blogs are just an excuse for people to rant and call it news. Uh, so I think having a blogging lab, lab could be something that's beneficial because we can also introduce what are the ethics of journalism at that same point so that maybe we don't see blogs that are out there just disparaging people. I mean, you were victims of it during the, you know, during your uh, campaign and it's, whether you agree with the, with the library's plan or not, 
some of the personal attacks were just just um, kind of out there. And, and so I think that we can maybe help educate at the same time. Of course, with all these labs, you're also looking at providing the media that goes with it. You know, you have a section of books for science or for video editing or for blogging made easy. All that stuff can be available. Moving on from the labs, sensory story times is another thing I would like to see in the libraries. I think that oftentimes we have parents who have children who are autistic or have ADHD or have some form of disability where their child sometimes is louder than most and they feel a little nervous about bringing their child to the library because they don't want to get shished or they don't want to have the perception that they're going to uh, affect other people. So why not have set up sensory story times where we're able to capitalize a learning time in the library so they get the full library experience without the fear or the animosity that they're going to be interrupting other people. My fifth idea here listed is a global library Skyping idea. You know, we, we've, the Internet's opened us up to a, just a, a global world for us. It's no longer just who's in our community. So why not set up a Skyping opportunity with other libraries around the world? In Franklin, I was thinking of our sister city in Japan. You know, having that set up so our kids can actually Skype with someone they've never met before from across the world in a very safe environment, which is something that we're concerned about when they're at home because we don't know who they're going to be talking to. In the library setting, we can control that and make sure it's a safe and educational opportunity for the child or the adult. Social media book clubs, taking book clubs to a different uh, level. You know, uh, we still have them today, and I've been to some myself, and I've enjoyed them where you go, and, you know, you read a book, and you meet once a week, and you talk about the chapters you read. But a lot of people can't do that. Maybe they've got young kids at home that can't take the time away. Their work schedules are different. Why not create events on your Facebook page on a book. Here's a book that we're going to read this, this month, and this week we want to read chap chapters 1 through 5 or whatever, and then everyone can get on there at a certain prescribed time and actually have a chat or post about that. The last thing I mentioned there is just simply some website improvements. Looking at the website, uh, it, and it's a, it's a good website, but uh, websites always have to be continually fresh and updated and, and something that makes you want to come there every time. If it's not a destination website, it's to me useless. You know, you go to a website because you want to see constantly evolving data and changes, and if we're not staying on top of that, then that could be an issue down the road. So we need to think of the, of the website as its own branch, not just a tool for the library, but it's actually its own branch that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So many more people can take advantage of library offerings if they visit that branch. And right now, I would say that maybe one of, it's maybe one of our least visited ones. And that's my opinion. I don't know if that's true or not. But I, w but I would like to see that, that more people are considering it brick and mortar, if you want. That's how we, we, we see it as our fifth branch. Awesome. And that's all I have. So thank you for bearing with me. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Thanks for putting it in writing. You're welcome. Well, I, was gonna, I was gonna share with John that there's an article back there on what are called maker spaces. All your lab ideas. So thank you very much. Oh, great, thank you. Well, I didn't put my name on the list, but Nobody else is moving, so. <laughs> a forest change, which White River Township. Uh, I guess I think of a little more simple scale than uh, some of these big projects, but uh, I've tried to make trips to all the libraries back when I was on an advisory group and uh, see what, I'm pretty happy in overall with what they've done to the libraries. You guys have um, done a pretty good job, I think. and. Uh, but you can always tweak up things a little bit. And a few things, just like what I'd like to mention, and I've mentioned most of these before, but like here at this library, I'd like to see some pictures on the wall. Something that would be nice to look at as people go around, you know, it kind of liven it up, and children's area kind of bright, nice pictures, children would like. It, it, it can even be paintings. I suggested before 
maybe have contests in the school and the winners, the best ones uh, that they would maybe would donate or let you borrow for a certain length of time and, and kind of spruce up the looks in here. To me, this is just a little drab in this library, but it's, it's nice otherwise, and they do a good job, the people are friendly. In fact, I found that in all the libraries. I don't have any trouble with people, they do great. Um, the uh, Trafalgar Library, I don't know, I'm not real fond of the Prairie Grass either. I guess it's the little library on the prairie, like the TV show about the house on the prairie, but it's okay with me. I, if they want that, I, I don't know. I'm a grass person, but green grass, but um, the Trafalgar Library certainly is a very nice, well done job down there. It's a very expensive job, and I think we found out that just uh, people are not going in, especially in these times, are not going to uh, <clears throat> support something that's terribly expensive. I think the uh, things that schools do should be left to the schools, and you should concentrate on things that libraries should be doing. Um, well, that being said, at, uh, at other libraries, the White River, I, uh, of course, I mentioned before, from the middle of the parking lot, where I always have to park, to the front door, it's length of a football field, 100 yards. I've stepped it off two or three times. And I think the west entrance could be utilized, and we talked about that. Bev, you suggested moving the children in the adult area, switching them. And I think that's a good idea. I'd like to see that. On, and have, you have to keep the old entrance for handicapped, you don't want to try and do that in another place, I don't think. So I just still keep the old one in the restrooms and the desk. But um, I'd like to see that happen up there. And I congratulate you on putting in the book drop. That's the number one thing people had mentioned they would like to have. So that's helped out, I think, a lot. Um, I like, not sure about partnership with anybody, but do, we have, do you have any kind of a partnership with Indianapolis Library Downtown, the main library, they have so much more. I mean, they can afford so much more. We can't afford it. really. And I would like to see cooperation if you could, you know, have a working relationship back and forth where if there's uh, things that could come from them, I don't know what you could give them back, but maybe a history of the county down here or something, but um, possibly uh, a working relationship with them. You used to could. Uh, get a card way back from the Indianapolis Library. I don't, I don't think you can do that now. Uh, if you lived here, you could have like a guest card where you could check things out. You probably won't be able to do that again, but... You can still do can it you do through, that? A, through a state program that you pay for. It used to be, um, it's $50 a year. And $50 a year. year? You can okay. use any library in the state. Um, okay. used to be that it was funded by the state, but it's no longer. Yeah, it used to be free, that's what yeah. I mean. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I think that, uh, as I said all along, I think they're doing a very good job. And I just like to see spruce them up a little bit, something that's not horribly expensive and uh, can fit within the budget. So, um, if they really, I guess I have to admit, you do kind of need to expand the Franklin Library maybe White River later, but uh, I still think, and I know I got shot down on this, but go south, <laughs> take out that driveway, build on to the south, That's put the right driveway right. back in as far south as you can go. On the south edge, you still have the drive going all the way around. And that way it would all be a join. And uh, since we didn't get the downtown library, I. If you were going to build a new one, I was certainly in favor of downtown. That's where it ought to be, but I don't think it's going to be possible. Even with the help of the city, which you probably wouldn't be able to get again, the dollar charge for the property or something like that. Wasn't it? And so um, uh, I guess that's all I have. But again, thank you for letting me speak. That's awesome. <clears throat> meeting has been an amazing delight for me, <clears throat> and I shouldn't have to say very much. My name is Rosemary Stifler, and I thank both of you speakers by the previous two, because I've been trying to figure out how to put into words ever since I heard about these meetings coming up, two things that have been in my head for quite a while, and I simply couldn't do it. So I'm going to keep quiet, which is unusual. <laughs> 
One of the things was, how do we make our libraries, or at least one of our libraries, a real destination with something that I think the jargon is a learning commons, a, a space for various kinds of learning. And the learning commons that I have visited have a number of things you describe. Producing a video, figuring out a science project, and it's a destination. People flock in there, they can talk to each other, they can work with each other, they can call somebody else to come in and help them out. Uh, and I thought you did a gorgeous presentation on, you've given that an awful lot of thought, thank you. And then your closing comment falls into something I said uh, when you had a meeting at Franklin months ago, very heavily attended, that that wonderful site that the Franklin Library sits on doesn't appear real wonderful because it's not really beautifully used right now. The building is, as everyone has said, a little bit dated. Uh, and there's that great south lawn. And when I was speaking about maybe building out at that direction, I was thinking of a learning commons, but I didn't know how to put that into words and it wasn't the time to do it. So I'm very grateful to two other speakers uh, to have put what I was dreaming of into words that I couldn't find. So thank you. And I think there really are some... First, and the other thing is, well, I've been working in library, I worked in libraries for about 40 years, and I helped design two of them. But that was in the ancient days of the middle of the 20th century. I cannot imagine how you design a library in the 21st century. I really can't. I have a question for Patty. Will, will you come to the yeah. podium, please? Yeah. Tell him your name. <laughs> <laughs> you got him up. <laughs> My question is, um, how, how far south do you really own? Um, we own one property to, um, is it Pearl Street? I believe that's the, the cross street that's there, yeah. whatever the cross street is by the, um, oh, uh, the nursing the, home. The entrance to the, the, entrance to the nursing the home. Um, as we've looked at, there's some real um, drainage issues in that whole area. But, but okay. I was always wondering stop why they the never built down that way. Well, some of the properties were just simply not available yeah. Yeah. They, at the time. They may be today, but they weren't yeah. at the time. Yeah. That you own to the north, am I correct? Up along the railroad track. We do, track. but again, a lot of that is is um, in right away for the railroad track. Right. That, you know, it's not it's not built around much yeah. parking lot basically. But thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Rosemary, what township you live in? I think oh, I'm I know. sorry. I'm in Union Township. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you wanted to say that. That's right. <laughs> Oh, what was your name, sir? Richard <laughs> Thomas. Thanks. I'm the other part of it. Anyone else? We've had some great comments tonight. Thank you for, thank you for your thoughtfulness. not, we'll just, you know, release you from your seated position, and <laughs> if you want to speak, you're welcome to speak to any one of us individually. I want to thank you um, so much for coming t tonight. We will be here until 8 o'clock. That's, you know, that's the time of the uh, public meeting, so it's still open, but I don't want you to feel uncomfortable with us staring you down <laughs> and you staring back at us. <laughs> But again, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate all of those of you who have um, commented tonight. And again, this is, has been videotaped and will be put on the website as well.